Hey guys, welcome back to Dude We Can Fix It. Today we're going to be taking a 4L80E transmission out of this truck. I'm going to walk you through the entire process so that you can do it to your vehicle as well. First thing we're going to do is pop the hood and disconnect the batteries. Now we're going to jack the truck up so we can get under there. So you don't have to take your wheels off, but it helps a little bit. We're doing it so that we can get better camera angles. Now that the vehicle is in the air, we will need to position a drain pan down here and use a 15 millimeter socket to remove the drain bolt in the transmission pan. Drain all the fluid out and then place the bolt back in. Now if your vehicle is so equipped, you're going to need to remove this starter support bracket. First you will need an 11 millimeter socket to loosen up this first nut. Once it is loose, go ahead and take it off and do not drop it into the abyss. Next, you will need a 13 millimeter socket with a short extension. We're going to remove this bolt here. Now, go ahead and remove this bracket. Now we need to remove the electrical connections from the starter. You will need a 16 millimeter socket with a short extension to get in here and loosen up the main power connector. Remove the nut, remove the lock washer, and then pull the power wire off. Push it out of the way. All right, now you'll need an eight millimeter socket to remove the signal wire. Remove the nut first. Now remove the small lock washer. There it is. And now remove the signal wire. Push this wire back out of the way. And now you're ready to remove the starter. You're going to need a 15 millimeter socket, an extension, and a ratchet. You may want to get a longer handle ratchet or a half inch possibly. These bolts are usually very tight. Go ahead and break these bolts loose. And take them out carefully. Once you have removed one bolt, you will want to leave a hand supporting the starter. That way it doesn't fall on you. It's very heavy and that would be very painful. Remove the second bolt. And now let the starter hang down a little bit and push it towards the front of the vehicle. Now you will lift the front of the starter up and bring the rear of the starter down by the control arm and finagle it. There you go. Now look in this area here where the starter mounts and see if you have any shims stuck there. If you do, Remove them, clean them, and store them with your starter bolts for reinstallation. They may also be stuck to the side of your starter. They look like this. Now we're going to remove the inspection cover. You will need a 15 millimeter socket, an extension, and ratchet. We're going to start by taking out the two bolts here and here on the passenger side. And then we're going to remove the two bolts on the driver's side over here and here. Once you get the four bolts out, this will be free and loose. We will start shifting it towards the driver's side. Start rotating like that. We need to pull down on this side over here. pull down and push towards the driver's side. Once you get this tab over, you should be able to wiggle it free like that. So now we will pull this little plastic cover off of here. Just rotate and pull, and slide it down the line. Next, a small pick, preferably with a 90 degree angle, is very useful to pop this little ring out of here. 
be very careful not to let this thing fly off. Looks like this. Now you should be able to just pry the oil cooler line straight out. And just move it out of the way. Do the same thing for the other one. So now we need to remove all the electrical connectors on the transmission. Let's start by removing the rear speed sensor connector. Simply pry up on this tab here and pull the connector out. Now we'll do the same for the forward speed sensor connector. Next, let's get this case connector. Simply squeeze on the front and back and pull it out. Next, we will need to break loose this wiring loom holder here. Simply insert a screwdriver in here and twist to break that loose. Now all these wires are free. The last thing to do is to remove these connectors here. Now these connectors are generally glued in place on General Motors vehicles. So we'll be using a heat gun. Heat these up for about 30 seconds. Once heat has been applied, you'll be able to pry these connectors loose. Then just simply move this wiring harness up and out of the way. We have went ahead and placed our transmission in neutral. That way we can rotate this drive shaft if we need to. Once we get it disconnected, we're going to need an 11 millimeter wrench to take out these bolts holding in the rear U-joint. Remove the two bolts and the bracket on the other side as well. And then grab your drive shaft and pull it towards the front of the vehicle. If it doesn't come out easily, you may need a pry bar to pry this U joint out. We are ready to remove the center support housing for the drive shaft. If your vehicle is not a long wheelbase, you may not have one of these, so proceed to the next step. You will need a 15 millimeter wrench on top and a 15 millimeter deep socket on the bottom. Go ahead and break both of these loose and then remove them. Once you get the bolt and the nut out of there, I would suggest cleaning them, lubing them up, and then once you have this drive shaft out of the way, storing them back here loosely in place. That way they won't get lost. Just like that. So now we need to remove these clamps holding the U-joint to the yoke. You need an 11 millimeter wrench. Get in here and break these loose. It may be helpful to have the transmission in neutral. That way you can rotate the drive shaft for easier access to some of the bolts. Now grab the drive shaft, pull it towards the rear of the vehicle. If it does not want to go, you may need to use a pry bar. There it is. Now you can remove the entire drive shaft through the rear of the vehicle. We have the drive shaft out of the way now. We are going to go ahead and remove the yoke. On these 4L80s, they usually have a bolt-on yoke, so we will need to remove this three-quarter inch bolt to get the yoke out. There's our bolt. Go ahead and give the yoke a little yank and pull it out of there. Pull it out of the splines. So we're going to remove the shifter linkage here. Pull this off. There's two tabs on here. Press up on this tab, start pushing this through, and you'll come from the top and push down on the other tab. Push it through. Now you'll push this back till the skinny section is in this slot, and then you'll just slide it right out. We are ready to loosen up the transmission mount. 
And to do that, we're going to need a 15 millimeter socket on an extension and look right in here towards the tail of the transmission under the support bar. We'll go ahead and loosen this off of here. We'll remove this nut and washer. Now we are ready to lift up the transmission with a transmission jack and remove this support bar. We're going to need an 18 millimeter wrench to place on the nut at the top. And then we're going to use an 18 millimeter socket on the bottom. If you have an impact gun like this, good time to use it. I've already loosened these just for demonstration purposes here. This is the top nut and this is the bottom bolt. I just go in like such. So go ahead and take the other one out on this side. And then repeat for the other side. So now we're going to remove the two 15 millimeter bolts holding on to the transmission mount. You'll need a 15 millimeter wrench. There's another one on the other side, which I've pre-loosened for demonstration purposes. So we have our two bolts out. Now we can jack up on the transmission. And move the support bar towards the rear of the vehicle. And then rotate the passenger side towards the front of the vehicle. take it all the way out like that. All right, so now we're going to remove the torque converter bolts. I'll go ahead and get you a 15 millimeter wrench on there and break them loose. There we go. Sometimes you may have to back up, have a backup wrench on another bolt to kind of help hold it. Or you could try putting a wrench on here and possibly tapping it with a hammer, kind of giving it impact action to help it break loose. But you will take out all six of these 15 millimeter bolts. Once you get to the point where you need to rotate your flex plate or your flywheel, you can come to the front of the engine. This one does not have an exposed crank bolt, but you can use one of these 15 millimeter pulley bolts on the main crank to rotate the engine. And keep rotating until you can see the next torque converter bolt. Here we are. Continue to do this until you have removed all of the torque converter bolts. So now you will need to use a series of extensions and a 13 millimeter socket to remove this nut here, which is on a bell housing bolt, and this nut up here, which is on a bell housing bolt, holding this bracket in place. Once you get that done, you can pull this bracket and move it out of the way and then you will need a 14 millimeter socket to remove the bell housing bolts, which are located here. Another one there. And then the third one on the driver's side is here. See the first one on the passenger side is right there. And then the other two passenger side bell housing bolts here and there for a total of six this top bolt hole here my truck is a 96 and does not use that this is a newer transmission but if you have a newer truck say 2000 or newer you may have a top bolt to take out here as well remember all the bolts are 14 millimeter except for the nuts holding on accessories are 13 millimeters. So now that we have the 13 millimeter bolts out, we can pull on these lines and disconnect this bracket, move it out of the way, and then we can access 14 millimeter bell housing bolts there and up there and remove them. All right, now that we have the bell housing bolts out and everything is disconnected, and we have slightly shifted the transmission off of 
the engine, we're going to carefully and slowly lower the transmission. And make sure that nothing binds up. There you go. Now, carefully remove the transmission from off of this jack. Now, if you want, you can set some blocks of wood on the side and then slowly lower it down on those. Or if you got a couple good strong fellas, just go ahead and grab it and set it off there. Just be careful. This is heavy and very awkward. And that's how you remove a 4L80E transmission. Thanks for watching, and as always, dude, we can fix it.